Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, today we will be discussing about leprosy and by the end of this session you should be able to list out the subcategories under leprosy as well as discuss the clinical features and the morphologic features in two important end spectrum of leprosy diseases. Now to begin with Leprosy you may have heard is also known as Hansen's disease and this name came from the doctor who has done extensive work with leprosy and it is an infection which is caused by mycobacterium leprae. Now, how does this particular infection get into a person? So, just let us look at the pathogenesis. Now, in pathogenesis the way it is transmitted is via the aerosols. So, we inhale the aerosols and from there it goes into the lung alveolar macrophages. Now, from the lung alveolar macrophages these bacilli they proliferate and from there they again go from the lung through the bloodstream into different parts of the body. Now, an interesting thing is this bacilli can proliferate in cooler uh, regions of our body and that is why it has a predilection for skin and nerves. So, as we go along you will see that patients have developed lot of lesions in relation to the skin in relation to the nerves. Now, let us look at the different forms of diseases. Now, there are five important categories. And if you look at the disease spectrum, you have one end the lepromatous leprosy, while in the other end you have tuberculoid leprosy. Now, in between you have a borderline lepromatous, you have the indeterminate leprosy, you have the borderline tuberculoid leprosy and the other end of the range is the tuberculoid leprosy patients. Now, what decides this subforms in leprosy? Now, it is determined by the uh, function of the T helper cells. Now, in the tuberculoid leprosy, there is a high response from T helper 1 cells and they produce a lot of interleukins as well as interferon gamma, while it is almost reverse in the lepromatous end, where there is a very weak Th. Uh, T helper 1 cell response, while the response from the T helper 2 cells is markedly increased. Okay. So, now we will look at the clinical and morphologic features of both the extreme ends, which I said is lepromatous leprosy as well as tuberculoid leprosy. So, first let us look at lepromatous leprosy. Now, most of these patients will present with hypoanesthetic patches that is the sensations are either low or they are absent. So, either hypoanesthetic or totally anesthetic patches. Now, how do these lesions look? They are either macules or they are papules or they could be nodules. And uh, the site at which these things appear is the wrist, you could have the ear lobes which are uh, you know uh, which become nodular, the elbows, the knees. So, these are the different sites where you could see lesions in the patient. Now, here in this picture you are seeing a patient who is having ear lobe infiltration and these nodular lesions will then coalesce, they will join together and form larger lesions and which become so extensive that we have what is known as a leonine face or a lion like look of the patient. So, that is a very classic look of lepromatous 
leprosy patients. So, what do you see in the microscopy? Now, in the microscopy as this picture is showing, we have what is known as a Grenz zone. So, what is a Grenz zone? A Grenz zone is a clear zone between the lesion in the dermis as well as the epidermis. So, the clear zone is known as the Grenz zone. Now, below the Grenz zone what do you see? You see a huge collection of foamy macrophages and it is here that you have the bacilli proliferating in huge numbers. So, the entire dermis is filled with foamy macrophages which is where the bacilli or the mycobacterium leprae proliferates. Now, here is a picture which shows the special stain which is known as phyte stain, the phyte faraco stain which is positive in the lepromatous end of the spectrum. And in this picture you are seeing that the histiocytes or the macrophages are completely filled with bundles of bundles of these bacilli which are stained pink. So, you can see these linear pink stained bacilli in groups and each of these groups are known as globi, they are known as a globi. Now, you also see a lot of neural involvement in these patients, we said that skin and nerves are primarily involved and this picture shows you how the new nerves are expanded and you are seeing lot of inflammatory cells infiltrating into the nerve bundles as well as causing thickening and enlargement of these nerve bundles. So, that was about lepromatous leprosy where we saw that the patient has lot of multiple lesions, you have lot of high uh, anesthesia in these lesions and microscopically there is a Gren zone and there is a, a, a proliferation of macrophages in the dermis. Now, let us look at the morphology of the tuberculous end of the disease that is tuberculoid leprosy. Now, tuberculoid in relation to lepromatous is a more localized kind of diseases. So, the lesions are much less and how are these lesions as uh, they are initially slightly red colored skin lesions and as they enlarge the lesion becomes more and more indurated. It has a hyperpigmented margin and in the center the lesion tends to clear out and that is the area where there is a healing where there is a lot of healing occurring. So, the center portion of this lesion becomes pale while the periphery appears more hyper pigmented. Now, as we discussed earlier that a tuberculite end of the spectrum the patient is having a good cell immunity there is a good there is an attempt to heal and there is a granulomatous response from the body and that is what you will see histologically. Unlike lepromatous leprosy where there was hardly any cell mediated response here there is a good cell mediated response and there is formation of granulomas. So, the hallmark of in histology is the granulomatous lesion and invariably the fight is negative. So, it is very difficult to get a positive white stain, but the presence of the granulomas around the vessels and around the nerves infiltration of these nerves is what tells us that this is leprosy. So, this picture is showing you a granuloma and in the granuloma you can identify a giant cell. So, to summarize what we learned today, we looked at the disease of leprosy and in leprosy we saw that it is caused by mycobacterium leprae. It is inhaled by, uh, by us and via inhalation it reaches the lung where it proliferates in the macrophages. From the macrophages it goes via the blood stream and then disseminates to the cooler parts of the body. And based on the immune response you have a huge spectrum of disease and the end range spectrum is you have lepromatous leprosy in one end where there is poor cellular response while on the other end you have the tuberculoid leprosy where there is a very good cell mediated response in the patients. And it is this response that also drives the histologic picture 
whenever there is a poor response in lepromatous leprosy, we see that there are a lot of foamy histiocytes with the bacilli proliferating, which is fight positive. While on the tuberculite side, because there is good cell mediated immunity, we see lot of granulomas.